In this video, uh, we will demonstrate how how the existing abstraction, when it's already done, is used. So uh, we have this demonstration of the SQL as with the bank bank accounts and customers, and we want to add uh, a command for changing the customer's name. So we go to the uh, abstractions XML file. This is the design level decision to add a command. We start adding a command, name it properly, change customer name. Then we identify its aggregate root ID name and its aggregate root that this command is targeting to. In this architecture, we have uh, commands assigned properly with the aggregate roots that they are affecting to. Then at this stage, we realize that we usually have a uh, one-to-one -one commands and events in this uh, solution, and we actually are going to do it uh, in this command as well. So uh, we have to first define an event, or we can do it beforehand, but let's do it in proper order. So we go to the events, and we define the SQLers architectural event, customer name change it. And we have uh, event properties that identify the customer. And the new name that is going to be changed. Now we define the event here, then we go back to the command level and simply introduce that this command customer name changed. Then we go uh, so that we realize the event changes. We don't currently store that in aggregate root at all, but we have denormalizer for denormalizers for queries. We have currently queries for uh, customers as a customer query. It provides minimum credit limit, name, uh, credit limit, balance. Oh, that's query parameter actually for minimum credit limit for uh, demonstrating the uh, parameterized queries. Then we have bank account queries that provide customer ID and balance and is exclusive customer uh, detail information. So uh, in this query list, we see that we have to touch the denormalizer uh, for the uh, customer query because the name uh, is, is provided there as an output. But the bank account query stays uh, the same because the customer name is not visible there. So we go to the denor denormalizer side and we add for the for customer denormalizer customer denormalizer that's going to denormalize for the customer query we add the new event as well customer name change it then for the standard abstraction usage we are happy with the xml we can verify here that the schema is valid we haven't missed anything for instance if we typo an event here the schema starts to complain that some uh, key key reference fails it cannot find this kind of event here so a schema verifies that most of our references are at least correct then we transform the templates that's the standard abstract and usage and we build the solution And this is where the generators have generated the code that we don't have the implementation yet. So we start clicking on the errors. And there's a small catch here. Because the generators generate code in this abstraction project, the Visual Studio is happy with the file that it finds from that project. But basically this denormalizer is actually on the domain project as it says here. So we have to go back and try to open this file Actually, it complains that it was opened from the wrong folder, uh, wrong project. What it means is that this, this file is not compiling, so Visual Studio is not completely aware why it's not compiling on that project. 
so we have to open it from the proper project then our resharper is also on the ball it says that it cannot find the implementation for handling the event we let it create the method call and now this is actually the normalization implementation so here we implement the normalization level we use the generator already provides auto saving context here it's an entity framework context that is wrapped actually like this it has on the behind the schemes if we go and look it creates auto saving context and after the method call calls the save changes so we don't have to worry about uh, creating the ceremonial call for the context and remember the call the saving ch save changes so we basically modify it like this we have the customer query customer customer query single candidate for search candidate ID is customer changed event customer ID and then we simply assign the name for the same name that came with the event and that's for our denormalizer then we have the aggregate root complaining the same thing that it gets uh, uh, the event is not handled. In this model we do not handle all, all the events at all at the aggregate root level. Right now it's an uh, implementational choice. We don't need the information here but we want to explicitly still call the code so that this is a coder's decision not to make uh, any, uh, not to do anything on the implementational level. Then we rebuild again. Build succeeded. We go to the VPF test bench, debug on this to see how it affects our model. We have actually, actually all the other commands here, but also the change customer name command here that takes customer ID and new name. So let's try it out. We have bank queries, customer query here name android creation this is automatically generated from our android tests we copy paste the uh, guide guide here and this name run the command through the event see the query and it changes the name run the denormalization also because the generators reflected it properly in our Android client code that's on the totally different IDE we see that it created the proxy for the command and we could now add here change customer name change customer name is change customer name create customer name is the same Same as we created there before. This new name is Android new name. And this would now execute the command on our Android side as well. So basically this appeared, the proxy appeared automatically here. Uh, once changing the model, it's already here. As it should and it calls the same same stack through the proxy that's how easy it is to use existing abstraction